labeled educable mentally retarded. Put back from the fifth grade to the fourth grade, fell again when I was in the eighth grade. And I never forget a gentleman who changed my life. He, I had the opportunity to eulogize him a few months ago. He said, young man, go to board and work this problem out for me. I said, sir, I can't do that. He said, why not? I'm not one of your students. Look at me, yes, sir. Go to the board and work the problem out anyhow. And I said, I can't. And the other students started laughing, saying, he's Leslie. He's got a twin brother, Wesley. Wesley's smart. He's DT. He said, what's DT? He's the dumb twin. <laughs> and I said, I am, sir. And he came from behind his desk. He looked at me. He said, don't you ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. <laughs> and that was a turning point in my life. On one hand, I was humiliated. But on the other hand, I was liberated because he looked at me with the eyes of Goethe who said, look at a man the way that he is only becomes worse, but look at him as if he were what he could be, then he becomes what he should be. Right. And so I had you to shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, you have something special. You have greatness within you. And I want you to know, you don't know whose hand you shook. Right. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor is in the heart of mankind what God has in store for that hand. Let us say together, my dream, my dream is necessary. Is necessary. I want you to write that down. I told my mother, Mama, what is it, Leslie? When I become a man, I'm going to buy your home. She worked on Miami Beach for wealthy families. She cooked for these families, and we ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. She kept their children, and we wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that she kept. And as a kid, I was a dreamer, and I was a mama's boy. I feel like Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am and all that I ever hoped to be, I owe to my mother. I stand on this stage because of two women, one who gave me life, the other who gave me love. God took me out of my biological mother's womb and placed me in the heart of my adopted mother. Mama had a third grade education and she adopted seven children. I was among those seven. And I had this dream of buying her a home. How many of you have somebody special you like to do something for? Raise your hands, please. Yes. Very good. I'm going to share with you how I got that. And I might run out of time because it's a union setting and, and I'm going to give you a way in which I can do a webinar with you or something so I can complete this. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want it to cost them to have any overcharges because of my being just brought up now. So at any rate, and I believe the reason you are here because you and I are cut from the same cloth. We are branches of the same tree. Everything that I'm saying, it's already in you. Yeah. I only attract millionaires of millionaires in training. Give yourselves a round of applause. How, how many of you like to learn how to make money telling your story? Raise your hands, please. I just finished speaking for AT&T and DirecTV and traveling around the world. Notice. I started off with my story, so I'm going to give you some tips now. There are seven tips I want to give you. There are three I want you to drill deep. Number one, tell your story succinctly. Why is that important, Les? Because when you speak, if you're in sales, if you're a consultant, you're an entrepreneur, when you speak individually and collectively, people are asking a question. Who are you? What do you have? And why should I care? And so when I started out, I told you I was born in an abandoned building on the floor with a twin brother. In a poor section of Miami, Florida, adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. Do you recall? Why do I tell you that? Write this down. To create identification, connectedness, and bonding. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. If anybody told me, learning how to strategically, and what I'm gonna teach you to tell my story, that when I speak internationally, I earned six figures. I don't tell you that to impress you, but to impress upon you, you have talents, abilities, and skills. It's one thing to later wait around for a concert, but it's something else. There's something different in you when you wait around to get some information that you know that's already in your heart, that can firm and validate that which you already know, that can take your life to another level. Take your, shake someone's hand on your right and left and say, I'm ready to go big. Do that right now. Big, raise your hands. Yeah. That's why you up in here. You're ready to go big. And that's what I wanted to do. 
And that's why I went to the Universal Foundation for Better Living. I was looking, when I came to Chicago, looking for something that will give me a key, looking for something that will give me something that will allow me to take charge of my life. I'll never forget my brothers and sisters there. I was a state legislator in Columbus, Ohio, and they said, Mama can't take care of herself, and we're going to put her in a nursing home. And I said, why? Well, she has breast cancer. And I said, no. They said, we knew you would say that, Barbara Ann, get on the phone. I said, listen to me. I said, no. See, I had a problem. How can one woman take care of seven children who couldn't take care of themselves, but seven grown people couldn't take care of one woman? I had a problem with that. And I said, no. And I resigned from the Ohio legislature, and I went back to Miami to take care of Mama. Never forget ringing the doorbell. And a lady named Miss Mildred was there and said, Mamie, Leslie's here. Now, I can hear my mother's voice now. She said, I knew he would come. I knew he would come. How many of you have someone you'd like to be there for? Raise your hands, please. Let me share with you how you do that. Let us say together, it's possible. It's possible. I can have my dream. I can have my dream. I got to do something else with you. You know, sometimes we have to be as little children. Am I correct on that? Mm -hmm. Raise your right index finger up. If you don't do anything else, do this. A special blessing coming your way. Put it in your ear. Put it in your ear. Just listen to me. You have something special. You have greatness in you. You have the ability to do more than you can ever begin to imagine. You're greater than your circumstances. You're greater than your situations. Everything that you work on is going to turn out fine. You were born to win. It's your destiny to be rich. Take your finger out. I didn't want to go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> I got you now. I'm going to make you rich and there's nothing you can do about it, all right? Now, write this down. Master something you love. I like to help people. How many of you love to help people? Raise your hands, please. I'm going to show you how you can do that and earn millions of dollars. Master something you love. When I was in school. I used to get in trouble for talking so much. They called me Mr. Vocabulary. Hey, why do they call you that? Well, baby, linguistically or rationally, I'm emphatic that I possess an ad in Finentum etymology was simply incomparable. However, I want to be like Columbus and discover you. <laughs> I was bad, all right? Now, success is doing what you love to do in service of others and finding a way to monetize it. Now, I didn't do what I'm doing now, I'll speak for major corporations around the world. I didn't do it for 14 years. You know why? because I thought it would be hard for me to compete with people with college degrees. I felt inferior to them. For me to compete with people with PhDs and, 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 and years of corporate experience, and I didn't have that with MBAs. How many ever thought about something you wanted to do and you talk yourself out of it? Raise your hands, please. Now, so that's what happened to me. I thought it would be hard for me to compete, not having enough money, and write this down. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. Coming up with excuses why you can't do it. Procrastinating, allowing yourself to be stuck by fear like I was. If you do what is easy, disapproving of yourself. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. <laughs> Write this down you will fail your way to success. See, I didn't want to fail. And 86% of people allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. I failed many times. And every time you fail, you learn something you did not know before. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. Walt Disney filed bankruptcy seven times. When you have goals and dreams, things are going to happen. I was working on my goals and dreams, a doctor looked at me and said something that nobody wants to hear. Three most feared words in the world, in seven different countries. You have cancer. You have cancer, young man. Your PSA is 2,400. That's just four years ago. One of four snomas metastasized to your bones. You have cancer. And I said, can you give me a second opinion? Yes, and you're ugly. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got problems. I got problems. My medication went off. I'm sorry. Right? But I'll never forget. 
When we were coming out of Florida Hospital, Dr. Julie stopped me and looked me in the eyes and said, Let